so the next one's called a convertible note. And this is probably the most common way that startups get invested because it's cheap and it's easy and it's, it's way easier than doing either debt or equity. And the expectation here is you put in some money and then later that, that capital that you put in is going to convert into equity. Convertible, that's the, what convertible is talking about. It's going to convert into equity and then you're just an equity investor and now you're back on the track of waiting for something good to happen, waiting for that acquisition or IPO. And I'm showing here that the, that the size goes down and I'm showing that because it's not going to typically convert until more investors come along. And it's, it's usually not you as the more investor. So you're investing now and the expectation is a two-step process. The expectation is that a lot more investors are going to show up you know, in a year or so. And then you're going to get a piece of their deal and it will be worth more than you paid for it. I'm not saying that the value goes down, but uh, the percentage ownership is small. And then your, your 10X grows from there, basically. And so the terms here, I'm gonna need Joe back on here to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, the first one didn't used to exist. The first one, the, the top one, I don't remember what year this got added in, uh, but in the last 10 years or so, uh, we call it a valuation cap. And it exists for some other reason, but these days what it, truly means, and you, you'll see this when you read through the whole document, this is what the valuation of the company will be if that new money never shows up, right? Because there's a maturity date attached to these things. This note will expire in a certain time period. They used to be really short. Convertible notes 20 years ago were three months or four months or six months long. Then uh, when I started Fledge eight years ago, nine years ago, they would be like a year long would be normal. Now I've seen two and three years. Now I've basically seen we're gonna, we're gonna let you invest and way long down the road, many years from now, we're gonna uh, turn this into equity. And if all goes poorly, if that new money never shows up in that time period, we're just gonna use the valuation cap as the valuation. So most people think it as a throwaway thing that's just there to, to protect you for something that's probably not gonna happen. Uh, but in reality, you're actually negotiating the valuation. And then the other two terms, because this is debt, it's convertible debt, it's convertible note, convertible promissory note. All, all these terms are, are what you'll see at the top of the document. There's a discount to that equity round. So what that means is that you're going to pay typically 80 cents per, you're, you're going to get 20% off whatever price those next investors are paying. So you're going to get a 20% gain on paper uh, when that happens, but it's actually going to be a little bit higher than that because there's going to be an interest rate attached to this note. And the interest rates, they vary. Uh, typical interest rates I've seen have been either 5 or 8%. I don't know why people pick those numbers, but uh, you know, I don't remember ever seeing 7 or 3 or 2. It's typically 5 and, or 7. I've seen 10 once or, once or twice. And all that really means is that whatever money you put in, so let's say you put in uh, $25,000 and there's a 5% interest rate. Uh, and so at the end of the year, if it expires in a year, you, you don't have $25,000 worth of shares to buy. You have 25,000 plus 5%. It just gets added into your capital. Now it looks like a note and it smells like a note and it, it smells like debt. It, it looks like debt um, with some extra paragraphs but it's never intended to get paid back. So it, there's a little bit of a weirdness that goes on in convertible notes in that it, it, it's, you know, again, it smells like debt in terms of paperwork and legalities, but you're not getting any monthly payments. In fact, you're never going to get this money back. You're only going to get equity. Uh, and Joe, can you refute that or, or add on to that? Well, it, it depends. I mean, um, I say never. Not but, yeah. Oh, well, okay. yeah. What, what I'm okay. What I mostly see in the convertible notes that I'm doing right now, and I, you know, my practice is mostly like West Coast tech company things. So, I mean, that's it's got that color on it, but or that kind of viewpoint on it. But yeah, what I usually see is the notes have a maturity date, and if if the company doesn't do a qualified financing before the maturity date, and a qualified financing is defined as raising a certain amount of money, new money, um, then the notes passed due and holders of the majority and principal amount of the notes could actually try to enforce the notes and collect the cash. Although it's a practical matter, they never do that. 
that's the way the notes are set up to to enable that if necessary. Yeah, oh, I, I left out that key term. Um, can the notes be changed? Uh, this is one that I got burned on once. Yeah, I yeah. signed a note as a fund manager for 16 Angels. So I was just, um, again, like we're doing a pool of capital for the for this program. There was a pool of capital as a prize fund and I was the manager of the of the fund. So I signed the paperwork and we were the last money into that deal. And so I couldn't negotiate the terms. One of the terms in there in the actual contract was a majority of the note holders can change any term in the note, which meant that when the maturity date came up a year later, well, I wanted something in return for extending it. Or personally, I wanted to convert, but nobody else wanted to convert. Uh, I wanted at least a bigger discount. Okay, you give us a 20% discount. How about a 25% discount for extending this for another year? And I couldn't get half the, half the note holders to agree with me. And so it just got extended with nothing. We'd got nothing for waiting another year. And then a year later after that, it got extended again. And when we got to year three, I got ahead of the curve and I talked to all the, all the note holders uh, and I got it to convert before it matured. But because that, that clause was in there saying a majority of the investors, as opposed to, you know, often it'd be super majority, you know, 75% or 80% have to agree, which means you as one investor might be able to have a veto or you and one buddy might be able to have a veto. So the little terms like that that show up in these contracts, they actually can wind up being important. Uh, and so we eventually did, in fact, convert this over to equity right at the end of the maturity date, right? And I did that on purpose to, to have, that, um, have that hanging over the, the founder of having that maturity date. Because as soon as it matures, if you go past the maturity date, it's now a defaulted debt instrument. And there's a whole lot of laws in every country about what happens if nobody pays their debt, right? Uh, as an entrepreneur, I tell the entrepreneurs never get in that situation. As an investor, yeah, sometimes going past the maturity date is good because now you have a little bit of control. And we'll talk about that in like two slides because there's another form that looks a lot like this, right? The diagram is exactly the same. It's called a safe. And a safe is a, um, uh, oh God, what's it stand for? Simple agreement for future equity. Okay, great. So a safe came along oh, about six years ago. It was invented at Y Combinator, one of the most prestigious accelerators in the world. The only accelerator in the world where companies are actually funded on demo day. So it's in Silicon Valley. There's too much money floating around in Silicon Valley. It flows really freely. And so what Y Combinator did, what the founder did, was he said, all right, well, convertible notes, they have all these terms to them. Let's make it simpler. Let's come up with the absolute simplest way for investors to invest. And what I will tell uh, all, all, every investor I've ever met, this is the most friendly terms for the entrepreneur. This is the most unfriendly terms for investors because there really is only one term. And the term is, what's that valuation cap? There can be a discount and there can be uh, other things like interest and there can be other terms in there, but typically there aren't. Typically, this is simply an agreement that says your, your money will convert to equity whenever, that, whenever we do another equity round. There's no maturity date. There's just nothing else that triggers anything. And so in, in big terms, this is have my money. I'll tell you in a few years what it's worth. Right. Am I am I dissing that too much, Joe? Well, no. It's it's a uh, you know what I what I like about safes myself is that I mean um, each safe is in and of itself its own financing round. It's not a bridge instrument. I mean notes convertible notes typically say this language we talked about before, like oh you got to go raise a qualified financing amount and then and then we convert into equity. Well, a safe never a, ne a safe doesn't have that feature, so. Each safe is in and of itself its own separate financing. And so, I, I mean, I know that investors knock on safes all the time. They don't like them. I think primarily because investors like to be, um, at least in Seattle, I mean, in, angel investors like to be dead so they're on top of the equity stack. And it's kind of like liquidation preference. Whereas if you're a safe, your equity is some unknown amount, <laughs> you know, in some unknown type exactly to be determined later according to a formula. But I mean, it is a very clever instrument. It is very easy for a company to raise money on a safe uh, with a willing investor because you literally can fill in like two blanks and take their money. So it's it's nice from an uh, expediency standpoint. Yes, there you go. So, and, and this is, again, this is the 
Uh, it came out of this organization where the 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 entrepreneurs are going to get funded. 80, 90% of the, of the entrepreneurs who come through this program get funded. And therefore, normally in the, in the normal world, outside of this one little corner, it's usually the investors that have some control, <clears throat> have more control than the entrepreneurs because they're more scarce. Yeah. Hey, Looney, do you remember when, yeah. do you remember when, uh, do you remember when Y Combinator was funding companies with uh, uh, no interest, no discount, no cap? Uh, convertible loans do you remember those those days yeah that that was that was where this came <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so, so funny yeah so in, in both cases unique, in both yeah in yeah. both both cases of convertible notes and safes they're simple and that's why people do them uh because a lot of angels just don't know how to do evaluation uh we go into valuations in a different class um and uh that again that's like 401 i uh, had a computer evaluation angel investing 401 and so this gets done and convertible notes and safes get done because they are quick and easy, uh, even though they may not be the, the best terms. And in general, if we step back 10,000 feet, 100,000 feet, uh, 10 kilometers, however you want to descri describe that, what we're, what we're actually doing here, if we're investing through one of these vehicles, is saying, here's some money. Here's my $25,000 check, my $50,000 check, whatever size it is. And I want this to be equity. But I don't know how much equity it should be right now, all right? We don't have enough information or we just, we just don't have the time to figure it out right now or that's just going to be too hard to figure out right now. So let's just kick that can down the road. We'll figure that out later. And so really, you don't do this in anything else in life. Well, I was told, that the, I, was, I read an article that said, this is kind of like, kind of like buying a house. And they, they say, okay, well, you know, Put in your, your half a million dollars for the house. And, you know, and a year or two from now, we'll tell you how much of the house you own, like based on some formula, based on something else that happens two years from now. Like no one would buy a house like that. Like you sit down and you determine what the house is worth and then you pay that if, if you want to buy that house. But in this case, we're really doing that. We're really saying, all right, I, I don't know what I'm buying. I don't know what percentage ownership it is. I don't know what the value of this company is. We're going to decide that in a year or two. And just keep in mind when it says maturity date and it looks like it's in a reasonable amount of time, uh, it's probably going to get pushed out into the future because raising money is hard. So again, why would I have done these? Um, well, I've done these in, in a lot of cases because other people wanted to do this. So I had my structure. Uh, I, I really try not to, to sign either convertible notes or safes. Um, but when the crowd wants to do it, I'll join in the crowd. So again, for example, here's another one of my fledglings. It's called Zirconia. Uh, it was actually another one of my students, but he didn't do this project in school. This is after school. On stage, what he pitched was a spray-on non-toxic coating that stops steel from rusting forever. That's a lot of words. Uh, so you put this on steel, and that steel will never turn to rust for the lifetime of the planet. So that's a pretty big, impactful idea. Uh, that turned out to be a harder product to, to start with. So he did a product first for concrete. It's a non-toxic spray on coating. You put it on concrete. Nothing will grow on that concrete. No fungus, no bacteria, no coronavirus will grow, will, will stick to that concrete. Uh, he's selling that into the food services. He's selling that into hospitals. You can actually just spray this on because um, it works on metal too. You can spray this on doorknobs. That doorknob will never have a virus on it forever. Okay, so that would be like Evernew. That would be a great equity investment, except he didn't raise any equity to start with. He raised a convertible round. So everybody joined in that. So, okay, I'll sign the convertible note for that. We will get the equity later. One example of a safe. Uh, I didn't go into the safe, but uh, I went in as equity. But after my equity, uh, Fuchsia Shoes raised a round with a safe. Uh, Fuchsia Shoes manufactures shoes with artisans in Pakistan and then sells them in the States. A Seattle based company uh, doing really well. Uh, so they went off and did an equity crowdfunding uh, campaign last year. They did it on a website called WeFunder. It's the biggest equity crowdfunding site for, uh, for uh, small companies. And uh, the structure that, that WeFunder uses is a safe. And one reason they do that is because they work as crowdfunding, they work with much smaller investors. I think the minimum check size there is like $500 or $1,000. Uh, and in my uh, evening cohort of this program, we're going to use WeFunder 
uh, as our pool of capital. So, you know, they raised, I think it was $60,000 last year from a whole bunch of investors. And that all went into a safe and that shows up uh, in their, in their uh, system, not as equity. It just shows up as a um, conversion to equity in the future whenever they do that next round. So these two are pretty close to each other. They're both in this space of convertible forms. And when we compare them and contrast them, in terms of how they work out, if, if all goes well, they're exactly the same. So if, if all goes according to plan, if this new money does get raised, then it really doesn't matter which, which one uh, you used as an investor or, or an entrepreneur, but it's what happens when things go wrong. That's, that's the differences. And so convertible notes, legally they're debt, which means they can default, which means that you have, as uh, Joe said, you're ahead of equity. What that means is if, if, you, if the company goes into default, you as a debt holder can push them into bankruptcy. Uh, you can sue them for, your, for lack of payment. Uh, and you are first in line to get repaid. So if they have to sell out the company, if they have to just sell some equipment to pay this debt, you're first in line to get that money. A safe is not. Safe is not debt. You, you don't have any, you're, you're not in the list of, of repayments at all. Um, so the debt holders get paid back first. If the company shuts down, then the equity holders get paid back. The safe holders never get paid back. It's just not part of the deal. Convertible notes always have a discount to the next round. I've never seen a note without it. I'm sure they exist. Um, but I've always seen it as you get a, at least a 10% discount on the next round. Plus there's this interest that gets tacked on. Uh, nobody ever pays attention to that. And on safes, there can be a discount, but there's no interest because it's not debt. Otherwise it would be a convertible note. Uh, anything else I missed, Joe? Yeah, no, I think that's pretty good. The, I mean, I think the safe is a really unique instrument and it's worth studying just for just for the reasons you might study anything that's uh, I think well done, you know. Am I right? I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any case law. Has, has there been any lawsuits around safes? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, I yeah, I don't. Uh, actually, I heard that the IRS was probably going to be issuing some guidance like later this year on the safe and other comparable instruments because you know one concern you might have if you're um, you know it, it, you know if you're an investor. I mean, is it if it, for tax purposes, it's dead, it's different, you know, you kind of need to want to know the tax result, you know, for, for yourself, because um, this sort of nebulous, but, but I do think, um, you know, I think parties can agree that something's going to be an equity, you know, or paid as equity, treated as equity, and not debt. I think parties can agree that contractually, I think that's um, enforceable. Yeah, I've, I've had, a, there's an angel in town, a prolific angel who used to be a, a CFO for, for hire. I sat down with him with this, when safes first came out and he just like put his head in his hands going, well, the IRS, right? Every country has their own taxing authority. In the States, we have the IRS. Right. We really are, only have two forms of, of securities. Either it's equity or it's debt. It can't be mixed with two. Yeah, yeah, no, it is strange though. Cause you, with, with even with stock, like even with convertible preferred stock, I mean, you can build in um, features that you know, make it look like debt. And so you, there is like a sort of spectrum of between debt and equity and some things are closer to the line than others. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, it's, it, and that's, I mean, you know. Yes, yeah, so I mean, it's the minutia and all that, but ultimately what, what he, his conclusion of this was like, stay away because you, on top of all the other risks you have of investing, you have this risk that the taxing authority is going to turn around and say, uh, you, 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 you know, you booked it. You booked it wrong on your taxes because you thought it was equity, and we're going to call it debt, or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, I mean, um, it's not like uh, it's not like there's like what tax advantages do you lose either way? I mean, um, you know, in neither event, you know, if you invest as an angel investor in the United States, you know, you're not getting to deduct any of these um, investment amounts, right? You're just um, like you buy a note and, you know, you're not going to get a deduct that investment and same with a safe. So I'm not, you know, I, I, get, I get the idea there might be some uncertainty, but like, what's the, what's yeah. the outcome? I mean, I, it, I think he was right that year, but here we are six, seven years later, and it's unlikely the IRS is going to consider this something crazy. They're, they're not going to all of a sudden turn around and say, no, it's really a currency. 
like uh, it's it's good they're gonna count it as a convertible note because that's what it's been. yeah yeah i don't know yeah it'll be, well yeah anyway interesting times i think that but i think that if the if you take a step back and just kind of think about what's going on we, we, i think we're going to continue to see and we might even see a more rapid uh, it, continual iterations of uh more and more sophisticated financial instruments to apply in these in these instances which what, what Louis talked about before was i mean sometimes you know uh, equity investments aren't the best thing for a company. I mean, if you're if you're taking, you know, the typical, you know, sort of complaint is, oh, you're taking venture capital. You're you're basically uh, you're basically lock and loading your company to either accelerate and go into the stratosphere or accelerate and explode uh, after takeoff and go to zero. And so a lot of founders think, oh, I don't want I don't want to take capital that forces me to like drive the car at 100 miles an hour to see what can happen. I want to take, you know, slow money or I want to, have, I want to have, I don't want to lose control. And I want to just build it. I mean, there've been lots of founders who built really great SaaS companies that generate tons of like just free cash flow every year. And they didn't take any money from anybody and how they enjoyed the cash flow. So I don't know, there's different instruments for different instances. And I think we're going to continue to see this, um, you know, you know, interesting structures put together. And yeah, there might be head scratchers from like various accounting and other purposes, but I think, I think that's kind of where we're headed.